Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I want to show you how to make this really elegant butterfly card using a couple of really simple techniques. So let's go ahead and get started. So for paper, we're starting off with the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. And then I've got this beautiful floral stencil. This is a six by six inch stencil. And I will list all the information and link all the information for the products I'm using today down below and also on my blog. So I'm taping that down with a little bit of purple tape and then I'm grabbing my emboss it dabber. This is from Ranger and this has clear embossing ink in it and it's got that sponge top. So I'm going to go ahead and just sponge that ink right down into these little openings. Now you could certainly use a watermark ink pad here as well, but I find this little dauber really lets me get down into these little tiny areas and I can get a nice coating of that ink all the way around. So now I can go ahead and remove that stencil and now we can do some embossing. For embossing powder today, I'm going to be using the Ranger Super Fine Detail White Embossing Powder and I'm going to sprinkle that on all over. And then you just want to tap off any excess. Now if you're worried about it sticking anywhere, you can always use your anti-static powder tool before you do your inking. Um, but I didn't really have any problems with this. So I'm going to, again, sprinkle that powder all the way around and then just tap off the excess. Now I can go ahead and heat set this with my heat tool. I like to make sure that the, the heat tool is nice and hot before I get started, and then I can go right to my cardstock. And you'll see that as this embosses, it'll get a little bit shiny, more of a shiny look to it. And you do wanna check when you're done, just kind of tilt it towards the light and make sure all those areas look shiny, especially when you have this much embossing. It's really easy to miss a spot or two. So I like to tilt it towards the light, make sure everything looks shiny. If not, go back over it and just touch those areas that need to be finished off. So you can see that there. So now this is going to create a resist for our ink. So I've got the brand new Saltwater Taffy Distress Oxide ink pad from Tim Holtz. And I'm going to start by bringing that in from each of the corners here. So I'm going to have it darker on the corners and then go lighter as we go in towards the center of the card. And I'm going to leave that center white. Once we get right into the middle of the card, I'm going to leave that white. So we'll just, again, blend dark to light here. I'm doing the four corners first, and then I'll fill in those other areas around the edges there. And this color, I just love this color. It's so beautiful. And it blends really well with a bunch of different colors that are in the Tim Holtz collection. And I've done some other cards using this new saltwater taffy that you can always check out. And so and today we're going to be combining it with the picked raspberry, which blends perfectly with this. It's going to give a nice highlight to this. So I'm going to, and you can see here that the ink is up on top of our embossing. So now I'm going to take a clean towel and I'm just going to wipe that away. So you do want to remove that excess ink because it won't stick. It won't dry on that embossed area. So you do want to buff that off. And then that brings out that beautiful white embossing. And that's called the resist technique. So now, again, we're going to add another color to this. But first, I want to trim this down. So I'm just taking that edge off. I like to emboss or stencil a larger area and then cut it down as I need to. I just find it a lot easier to do it that way. And then I can cut away any areas that I don't like or pick the, the side of the card that I prefer. So this way I just start off with that six by six and now I'm just trimming that down. And we'll be trimming it down a little bit more later on as well. So now 
Let's go back to the saltwater taffy ink and I'm going to place a little on my glass medium mat. I'm using my distress sprayer which just has water in it and I'm going to give this a little spritz and then we're going to spatter this entire panel and that is going to add a lot of texture and interest to this. And I'm using a smaller paintbrush because I do want those spatters to be fairly small. So I can set that aside and now here's that picked raspberry. And you'll see that when I start to add this to the edges, again, a little bit more in the corners and then a little bit lighter around the sides. And I'm going to blend that right into that saltwater taffy. And these two colors I just thought blended together, absolutely gorgeous. Another color that blends really well with this uh, saltwater taffy is the abandoned coral. It's just a couple shades darker than the saltwater taffy, so it's really pretty. So now you can see that up close, and again, I buffed away any excess ink there. Now let's grab these three butterflies, and this is from the Art Impressions Butterfly Set. So I'll remove that foam pad from my Mini Misty because we're working with a thick rubber stamp here. And I'll place these down onto some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. And then to do our stamping, we're going to be using the Versamark Watermark ink pad, which is a similar type of ink that was in that little dabber that we used before. They're both clear embossing inks. But to do my stamping, I find it easier just to use the ink pad. So I'll press those out, and I'm going to actually ink this up a couple of times. I'll flip this around and we'll stamp three more of those butterflies. I'm stamping a few extras for my envelope and you'll see later on I'll show you what that looks like. So now that I've stamped that a few times we can go ahead and add that same embossing powder. And then we'll just tap off any excess and we can go ahead and heat set these as well. Now for these, we're gonna be doing a bit of a water coloring technique, but we're going to be using the Distress Oxide inks that we used before. So we're going to be using the Saltwater Taffy ink and the Picked Raspberry inks. So I'm going to place a little bit of each of those inks down on my glass medium mat. I'll go ahead and spritz those with a little bit of water. And then with that same small paintbrush that we used before, we're going to apply that lighter color to the wing. And I'm going to fill in that wing. And you can notice that the ink is nice and wet here, and that's what we want because then we're going to come in with the picked raspberry and we're just gonna drop that color in. And as long as you have enough water in there, it'll just kind of blend out. You really don't have to do much here. So I'm just going to drop that in. Now clean off your paintbrush and then start again with that lighter color. Again, just filling in that whole area. And what's nice here is that embossing keeps that ink right inside the lines here so that makes this watercolor technique really easy so again adding that lighter color and then i'll drop in a bit of that darker color so don't be real fussy here each wing is going to look a little bit different from the others but that to me is part of the beauty of it is that it just just gives you that really elegant watercolored look. And again, this is so easy. Don't be too fussy here. Just kind of let the ink and the water do the work for you here. And you can see here I'm dropping in a little bit more of that darker color. And then I'll let that dry a little bit and we can take another look at it later on. So let's go to the opposite side of the cardstock here and while that other one is drying a little bit and we'll do the same thing. So I'll finish showing you this second butterfly. And then at the end, after these dry a little bit, I'm going to add a little bit more detail to these as well. 
and I'll show you that here in a second. And do remember to clean off your brush before you, when you go back to that lighter color. You want to get rid of the, any of that darker color so that you can apply only the light color and then drop in that darker color. So I finished coloring in the rest of these off camera. And now I'm just going to pick up some of that picked raspberry and just add a little bit of detail to these butterflies. So they're dry now. You want to make sure that they're fairly dry before you do this because otherwise it will just blend right in. So I'm just using that darker color and just very subtly adding a little bit of detail here to the butterflies. So now that that's all set, let's add a little bit more interest by spattering these butterflies. So I'm using that picked raspberry again, and I'm going to go ahead and spatter over top of all of these little butterflies. Again, that's just going to add a little bit more interest here. So once that's done, I'm going to cut this panel down again because we're going to be layering it onto this gold metallic cardstock, which measures five and three quarters by five and three quarters. So I'm going to cut this panel down to fit right on top of that. And that'll leave a little gold border all the way around the edges. Then I've got my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive, and I'm going to just center this and glue these two together. So now let's go ahead and create our card. This measures six inches by 12 inches. And remember that the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock paper pad is 12 inches long. So you can create these larger cards with that paper. And it's a nice heavyweight cardstock, so it's perfect for your card base. So I'm just going to score it at the six inch mark and then we can fold it in half and this will give us a six by six inch card. So let's grab our detail scissors. We can go ahead and cut these out. I am going right up to that embossed area. Now, if you accidentally cut into that embossing, don't worry, just grab your heat tool and reheat that. It'll just melt that powder right back into place. So let's grab two circles from the circle double stitch die sets. And one will be die cutting the smaller one out of the white Bristol Smooth cardstock and that larger one out of the gold metallic cardstock that we used before. I like to cover that gold metallic cardstock with a little bit of scrap paper when I run it through my die cutting machine, just so it doesn't get any marks on it. So let's go to the watercolor sentiment set from Art Impressions. And we're going to be using that sentiment that says, beauty is all around you which I just love. That's one of my favorites. So I want three lines for this sentiment. So I'm going to go ahead and snip this stamp apart. Now you don't have to do this. You could certainly mask off the different words that you want to use here. If you don't like cutting your stamps, and I know a lot of people don't, I actually didn't like to do it myself for a very long time, but you can easily snip them apart and then you can line them back up if you want to stamp them the way they were intended. So don't worry about it. Do whatever you feel most comfortable with here. So I've lined those up on that circle. I did put a little tape underneath that just to hold that in place. And then I'm going back to that Versamark watermark ink pad and I'm going to ink this up and stamp it a couple of times. And then we'll go back to that same embossing powder again and do our embossing.
Now let's go back to those same two inks and we'll do a little bit of ink blending. I'm going to apply that saltwater taffy all over the top. And then we'll come in with that picked raspberry just around the edges here and just kind of blend those two together. Just keeping that the edges a little bit darker with that picked raspberry. And then I'll also lift up this circle and apply a little bit more ink around the edges. And here I'm just buffing away that ink just like we did before. So let's go ahead and glue these two together. And now we can go ahead and center it on our card. I'm using some Scotch foam mounting tape just to pop that up a little bit. Now I think this card would be really great for even for a sympathy card, a wedding card, uh, just a friendship card, whatever you want. It's just so simple and elegant. And you could make a whole bunch of these in a variety of colors. Do one in blues, one in lavenders, one in uh, you know reds and oranges would be really beautiful. So once you have this design, you could create a whole set of note cards for somebody and then also just change out those sentiments inside the circle to fit the, the card that you're going for. So I've just folded these butterflies down the center a little bit and then I rounded back the wings just slightly. I'm going to put a little bit of that foam tape right down the center and then just position these in place. So just play around with that placement a little bit till you get it the way you wanted it. And by popping these up, they'll be a little bit more lined up with that circle that we already popped up. So I just wanted to get them up high enough here. So now I've got these beautiful pearls. These are a two-tone pearl. And these are from Picket Fence Studios. This is called the Pearl Mix. And again, I'll list and link all these products down below for you. And then I'm just going to place one of these in the center of each of these little butterflies. I'm using my Marvy Jewel Picker to pick up these little gems. And then I'll go back to that Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive to glue these down. Then I wanted to add three right along the side here, and I'm going to use a large, medium, and a small. So that finishes up the card, but now I wanted to create a really pretty envelope to go along with this. And again, I've got those two extra butterflies that we created before. So I'm using my Shimmer Pastels cardstock. This is from Die Cuts with a View. And it's this beautiful, shimmery, light, lighter weight cardstock. I'm not sure what the weight is, but I'd say like around 80 pounds, maybe a little bit less. So I've got my envelope punch board from We Are Memory Keepers. And what you want to do is look up the size of the card that you're making. So we've got a six by six card. So we have to cut our paper at nine and a half by nine and a half. And then our first score is going to be at four and three quarters. So now I've got my cardstock cut at nine and a half by nine and a half. I'm looking for that four and three quarter inch mark there. And that's the only time we need that little marking at the top. Once we punch and score the first one, we don't need to worry about that again. Now we're just going to focus on that score. We're turning it, lining it up with that little point right there. And then we're punching and scoring again. And we'll do that all the way around. So again, we want to line up that point with the score line. Punch and score. And one more time here. Again, lining that up, punching and scoring. And it's really that simple. I love making my own envelopes because I can really personalize them and I can make it perfectly match the card that I've created. 
So there's a little corner rounder on the back of this. You can just round off each of the corners here. And then I can go ahead and start folding this. I'm just using that bone folder just to press out those creases a little bit. And let's just check and make sure this is going to be the right size and it looks like it fits perfectly. So I'm going to use a little bit of glue right here with these two sides meet in the middle there. And I'll just hold that down for a minute or two till it dries. And then you can also use your score tape here as well. So whatever you prefer. Um, here I'm just using the quarter inch score tape. You could certainly use your glue here. I like to press it down with my bone folder. It just makes it a little bit easier to uh, remove that release paper. And then I'll just bring up that bottom flap and this envelope is all set. I've added those couple of butterflies to the back of the envelope and you can see how pretty that looks. So let's take a closer look at the finished card and we've got that beautiful resist embossing and ink blending. I just love these two colors together. And then our pretty watercolor butterflies. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.